Hello everyone, back with another one. Today I'm talking about brakes again and how we can make them better without buying new ones. Now this will be for all the Shimano brake guys out there, but this could work for SRAM brakes too, but I haven't tried it to confirm it on a set of guides or codes. By the way, I need to be clear. This is not a sponsored video in any way for any of the brands spoken of in this particular video. These components I paid for myself without any affiliate with any of the brands, which allows me the opportunity to speak freely and how they really performed. Now, good brakes. They're that one thing that can give you that security and confidence to go faster or to try steeper descents. When you don't have good brakes, you'll probably pass from attempting many features, trails, or descents. Now in my previous brake video, I showed how to improve your brakes and performance. By the way, I appreciate all the love and support and you watching that video and giving it a thumbs up. I'm also doing this video due to many of you who reached out to me on Instagram and in the comments or in the email. I'm going to share what I've tried and what I've learned. So, here we go. All right, I thought I had discovered a great way to improve braking performance by doing a couple of things. One, adding MTX ceramic gold brake pads, and two, installing Gelfer wave rotors that were 2.0 millimeters thick. And many of you noticed it was a bit noisy. What also happened was this strange noise every time I applied the brakes. Take a listen. Next, I noticed the front 203 millimeter rotor would flex in hard turns and you could hear it. It did not affect the performance, but going into a hard berm turn, it was very noisy. I really believe this is due to the very large holes that are in the wave rotors, which can cause the larger rotor to flex up front. So my search began again. I wanted something that was at least two millimeters thick I heard great things about Trick Stuff rotors, but they're a German and they're really hard to get. And SRAM's new 2.0 millimeter rotors, well, they weren't even out yet. And Magura's rotors, they seemed promising, but the reviews were quite mixed. Then, I discovered TRP rotors. These are not just two millimeters thick, they're 2.3 millimeters thick. TRP also makes these as a two-piece floating rotor as well, and they are slotted and have a 2.3 millimeter thickness to them. But the only downside to the two-piece rotor is they only come in 180 millimeters and a 203 millimeter size. Now taking them out of the box, you get the swanky brushed aluminum one-piece rotor. And you get these little rotor bolts with the wrench for an easy installation. The claimed weight for the 203 millimeter rotor is 245 grams, but it actually weighed in here at 244 grams. Now these things look really amazing up close and take a look at how thick these are. When you see the Shimano Ice Tech rotors or a SRAM centerline rotor next to one of these, they actually look really cheap and paper thin. To my knowledge, Shimano does not make a two millimeter thick rotor and SRAM just recently released their two millimeter thick rotor. I would suspect that Shimano soon is probably going to come out with a two millimeter thick rotor because of the performance benefits. But it's also a good possibility that your bike at this time probably is running a 1.8 millimeter rotor. Here's a little side by side to the Galfer rotor. They both look really good, but one outperforms the other. Now the claimed weight on the 180 millimeter TRP rotor is 191 grams. The scale said 194.5 grams. It's not too far off from the claim. To compare all three brands on the weight scale, we have the Galfer 180 millimeter rotor. It came in at 134 and a half grams. 
the 203 millimeter size came in at a weight of 166 and a half. The Shimano 203 millimeter rotor that weighs in at 167 grams. The TRP rotors in the 203 millimeter size are approximately 77 grams more than the Gelfer or Shimano rotor weights. The TRP rotor in 180 millimeters is approximately 44 to about 60 grams more in weight. So the TRPs, they do weigh more, but they are well worth the slight weight penalty. They also have this black wear indicator, which tells you when it's time to replace them. Side by side, here's the Shimano ice tick rotor on the left, next to the Galfer rotor on the right. There is a reflection on the Shimano rotor, and the edge is not black, so it appears thicker than it really is. Look at the top of the Shimano, and you can see it's thinner than the Galfer rotor on the right. Now the Galfer rotor is on the left, and the TRP rotor is on the right. You can see how much thicker the TRP is than the Galfer 2mm thick rotor. Next, we have all three of them side by side. Again, the Shimano is deceptive because of its aluminum steel construction, but it's much thinner than the other two. Now, we need to talk about brake pads as well. I've used Shimano pads, used the Galfer pads, and MTX brake pads. Now at first state that the Shimano metallic pads are the best performer that Shimano makes and they're affordable at $24.99. They have a powerful bite point, but for those who want modulation, they don't do that very well. They're basically on and off. Plus, they can be loud when going down prolonged downhill sections. Now, Galfer e-bike compound pads are their most powerful pads. They're priced at $31.99 and they give kind of a dull feel at the bike point. Not very crisp when you hit the lever. They have good modulation, but you do have to grab it tight because performance feels noticeably weaker. The MTX Gold brake pads are the best performer MTX makes. These are the ceramic brake pads and they do cost more. They come in at $32.99 for a set. But if you sign up for the emails, you can get 10% discount code, which brings it down to just under 30 bucks. But you will notice, or what you will notice, is the initial bite. When you pull the lever, the pad says, mm, yeah. the attack at the initial bite is crisp. They really let you know they are there with power and they're really silent on long descents. They have fantastic power at the wheel, but the pad that edges them all out is the TRP four piston centered metallic pad. They come in at $24.99 in price. They modulate the best out of the ones mentioned here and they throw down the power quickly the more you pull the lever. They're quieter than the Shimano pads and the Gelfer pads. Now, once they break in, you're gonna love the modulation and power. And these alone would be a great option to optimize braking performance. Because honestly, pads make a huge difference to a set of new rotors in their performance. Don't do that. Now here's a tip. It's best when switching to a new set of brake pads to also change your rotors. If your rotor has been embedded with your old brake pads compound, even if you lightly sand that rotor with a fine grit sandpaper, you might not get it all out. And what you're gonna have is a loud break. And the reason is the old pads compound are still embedded in the rotor and are not playing well with the new pads compound. They're actually working against each other. These TRP rotors, they are available as well in a large 223 millimeter size as well. Real world performance of the TRP rotors? Well, these rotors give your brakes an overall stronger bite at the point of hitting the lever all the way through the pull. The power is noticeable over the Galfer rotors. Because of this, it requires less force to slow you down, which can translate into less hand fatigue. Now, TRP says these rotors offer a greater cooling capacity and 47% torsional stiffness. Now, I can sure appreciate that stiffness that eliminates brake vibrations 
that I was getting with the Gelfer rotor, and I've experienced this many times with the Shimano Icetech rotors. Because they are bigger and heavier, they've never bent or warped on me when I've been riding in prolonged downhills, as I have had to happen to me many times with the Shimano Icetech rotors. Again, remembering that the Icetech rotors or the SRAM centerline rotors are only 1.8 millimeters thick, so they are much thinner. They heat up faster and they can warp and this has happened to me many times. This leads to loud rotors that vibrate and they sound like turkeys going down the mountain. Also, because of the increase in power, I can run a 180 millimeter rear rotor and it's super powerful. Sometimes it just locks out. And I was considering a 203 millimeter rotor for the rear, but really I, I don't need it. And I weigh 215 pounds and this thing, it works great on the back tire. All the weight penalty at over 100 grams more, it's well worth it to me. When it comes to performance gains and long lasting equipment reliability, I can't tell you how many Shimano rotors that I've gone through. Now, as I started this video off, I said, I'm not sure if these rotors will work with SRAM brake calipers, but I did run them with Shimano XTR brakes, which means they'll work on XT or SLX. The pad clearance is close, so you will have to readjust your caliper, but they will fit. Now, I would suggest making sure your pistons in your caliper are pushed inside all the way to ensure they fit, then reinstall your pads and then insert the rotor with your wheel. Now, if your wheel is out of true, you will have to get that sorted and then try it again. These rotors with a new set of TRP pads or MTX pads, it's gonna bring your brakes to a new life you're gonna get a strong level of performance and improvement to your calipers at a price that is well under a new set of brakes. So I hope this video has been really super helpful and answered some of the questions some of you have been asking. And I'm gonna be back soon. I can't wait for the snow to melt. We've got more to come on this channel. See ya.